spooky. Yo. And we back with another reaction video. Mooty, bro. Didn't I tell you I was going to bring you a lot of controversial videos, bro? Yeah, yeah, you said that. Listen, bro, the entire <laughs> history of cheating in football. Lord, first. <laughs> to get a lot of people mad, man. You feel me? If y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Yes, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Mooty, let's get straight into it, bro. Football players have been cheating for over a hundred years. In the 1920s, they dug holes in the pitch to try to injure their opponents. In 1960, wow. they hid blades in their boots. And today, lasers are being used to blind players. So, this <laughs> is the entire history of cheating in football. Let's head to 1915, when the first ever match-fixing scandal came about between Manchester United and Liverpool. At this time, Man United were battling relegation and Liverpool were comfortable in mid-table. But when they headed into their... Battling, battling relegation. What, they about to get sent down? Yeah, like they ain't doing too hot. Yeah, relegation is, is, is tough, bro. That's one thing about football that's crazy, yeah. bro. You can get sent down if you ain't playing too good. Yeah, yeah, but just think about it, bro. That's a great thing, though. What, you know if, what you if you get sent down? No, you have to be good to, to remain on top. You can be good. Just imagine, imagine the NBA. They have trash seasons every year. Washington <laughs> Wizards. Yeah. Have a trash season every year. Facts. But at the same, they come back next year. And they still. be like, they be like, we just we on a rebuilding process. Yeah, they've been rebuilding for like last 10 years, bro. But I'm saying you can't rebuild in football. Oh, you gotta be good. You gonna be mad, it yo. It makes you wanna compete more, you know what I mean? Bro, that's heartbreaking. You're gonna be mad at your teammates and all that. Yeah, like, yeah. yo, if you don't get your stuff together, our pay is gonna get cut. Yeah. TV time, everything. Your wife probably leave you and all that. Yeah, yeah, take the dog, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Their match, something seemed off. The referee <sighs> noticed a lack of commitment from the Liverpool players as they missed a penalty, and some players would even get angry when teammates would try to score. Mm. The game finished 2-0 to Man United, which saved them from relegation, and instead saw Chelsea go down. It was later discovered that seven of the players on the pitch were involved in a betting scandal in wow. which they all placed bets on a 2-0 victory to wow. United. The English <coughs> FA then banned these seven players from football for life for fixing the game. Ooh. But match fixing is still common in today's game. Something that we don't see anymore is what happened in 1924 because officials were literally digging holes That's in the crazy. pitch to try to injure players. In oh. Imagine Buenos Aires to lift the league title, the Argentinian team Chaco Rita was so desperate to win that they snuck into the pitch late at night and <laughs> dug holes in the ground, hoping their rivals would break their legs falling in these holes. Turns wow. out they avoided the holes at one. Yo, bro, that's that's too much. Now you setting booby traps for the other team, bro. <laughs> in America, family, of course we done seen like uh referees uh scandals yeah, uh scoring scandals mm -hmm. uh somebody what shaving points or something absolutely. scandals yeah, yeah but to destroy somebody to injure somebody yeah that's that's just a little too much i seen a, a probably a, a player try to beef with another player to get him out the game like yeah. how last stevenson blew on his whistle to get him irritated to get him yeah. out the game but really change your livelihood bro what you think about that fam Man, it's it's I think it's not good, like, bro, like, this is how people, you know, feed their families. I'm pretty sure the money wasn't as good as it was back then as it right. is now. But, bro, just to try to take somebody out the game by actually injuring them and not having them do what they love doing, just like you doing what you love to do, it's just too much, bro. Yeah, that, on, that's, that's heartbreaking, bro. I ain't gonna hold y'all. On the match the next day, securing the league in the process, meaning this time the cheaters didn't get what they wanted. But digging holes in the oh pitch is gosh, nothing compared bro. to sticking needles onto your boots. Mm. The year was 1960, and Carlos Bilardo was playing in midfield for Argentina. Carlos was the type of player who would do whatever it took to, to win, win, even going as far as to stick needles in his boots to be able to prick his opponents mid-game. But this wasn't the only cheating Carlos would take part in because as a manager, he would encourage his players to rub deep heat in their opponent's eye. They let this dude be a coach? Wow. How they let this dude be a coach after all that, bro? Or they ain't find out till way after the fact. Yeah. Somebody must have snitched on him. Mm -hmm. Like a player must have had like an interview or something. Movie right. And told all your secrets. 
90s and even went as far as to offer Brazil doped water in the 90s. But surprisingly enough, his dirty tactics actually seemed to work as he lifted the World Cup with Argentina, writing his name in the history of football. Okay, now let's skip forward to 1983, where cheating was taken too far, because this time it left Diego Maradona with a broken leg after one of the most brutal tackles Ugh. ever. This is Andoni Gokachea, better known as the Butcher of Bilbao, who played as a central defender for Athletic Bilbao. He got this nickname for his extremely aggressive style of play, but in a match against Barcelona, he turned aggression into blatant cheating Ugh. when he went in to injure the best player in the world at the time. With one of the most brutal tackles in football oh. history. This tackle left Maradona with a broken ankle and saw the butcher get a 16-game ban from football for the oh. deliberate injury. Instead of feeling remorse for the damage he caused, the butcher keeps the boot on display in his home for him wow. to remember that moment no. forever. That's just brutal. But Graham Souness literally shrunk the football pitch to try to win a match. <laughs> he was managing the Scottish football club Rangers and was heading into the second leg of a European Cup match against a talented Dinamo Kiev side. Rangers lost the first leg 1-0, but Souness came up with the plan. He knew that his team couldn't win by playing better football, but he thought that if they got physical, they would manage to snatch a victory. So the day of the match, Sunis got the club to shrink the pitch by moving the white lines inwards, meaning the game would be tighter and would get more physical. Wow. The Kiev players trained the day before on a normal-sized pitch, so they were in for quite a shock when they arrived and ended up losing 2-0, meaning Rangers went through to the next round. Now, this wasn't clear-cut cheating because there was no rule that specifically said this couldn't be done, but after this game, it was made a rule that clubs had to announce their pitch size before the season begins. Now, whilst this may not have been clear cheating, what this goalkeeper did definitely was because it got his country banned from the World Cup and yeah. got himself banned for oh, life yeah. on September 3rd. I know they hate him. Oh, I, he got his country yeah. banned. Yeah. Bro, they hate him, bro. Like, yo, hold up, yo. 1989, Brazil faced off against Chile in a match that would decide 1,000 spectators, and within the first half, Chile found themselves in the lead one goal to nothing. Roberto Rojas, the Chilean goalkeeper, was having a fine game when suddenly a flare was thrown on the pitch mm. right next God to the goalie. Damn. The medics rushed to see if he was okay, found him bleeding, and rushed him off the pitch. The Chilean team claimed that the Brazilian fans were the ones who threw this flare, but this wasn't picked up on camera. If the Brazilian fans were found to have thrown the flare, then Brazil would have been disqualified and Chile would have been sent to the World Cup. But it turned out that one photographer was able to capture the incident, and once the photos were developed, we could see the flare was nowhere close to Rojas. Hmm. It couldn't have hit him. The Chilean goalkeeper later admitted that he was so desperate to qualify for the World Cup that he hit a razor blade in his gloves and cut himself to cause the bleeding. Oh, oh this gosh. meant that Chile were disqualified from the World Cup and Rojas was given a lifetime ban from football. Oh, okay, wow. now we're entering the 90s and the cheating just gets even crazier from here, <laughs> like the country who sent drones to spy on French training or the World Cup winner who got caught cheating and was banned from football for life. But before we get to those, in 1991, we had one of the craziest cheating moments ever because Diego Maradona got banned from football for 15 months. Now, Maradona has cheated before, but he's managed to get away <laughs> with it famously with his goal against England to send them home from the World Cup using his hand. But in 1991, things got taken to a whole new level for the Argentinian when he was called in for a doping test and ended up testing positive, which saw him get a 15-month ban from football. Now, we, uh, I think we react to a story about that. Diego Madonna doing like drugs and stuff, right? Mm. Do you remember? Really? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure though. You'd think he would have learned from this ban, so when he returned, this didn't happen again, right? Wrong. Because in 1994, during the World Cup, the same thing happened again. Wow. Diego didn't manage to get away with it, but a player who did get away with cheating is Andres Muller, hmm. whose cheating won Borussia Dortmund the Bundesliga title. In 1995, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich were in a title race to lift the Bundesliga, so when they faced off against each other, it was like a Bundesliga final. During the game, Dortmund midfielder Andreas Muller decided to take a dive in the box and won a penalty. He hmm. claims this wasn't a dive, but 
Come on, there was literally no contact. Mm. This penalty won Dortmund the game, oh and then gosh. also the Bundesliga title. Muller was later banned for two games, fined, and suspended from the national team for a while. Ooh. But he didn't care because he was <laughs> a Bundesliga champion, so the ban was definitely worth it. Wow. Yeah. Muller isn't the only football great to get away with diving because in 2002, Rivaldo got football confused with Olympic springboard diving. It was the World Cup, and Brazil faced Turkey when a Turkish player kicked the ball at Rivaldo. <laughs> Rivaldo took the opportunity to go for a dive and got the Turkish... Yo, you hey, say yo, that. That's crazy, bro. He kicked him in the knee and his whole body just, just fell. Just broke down from, <laughs> from the knee up. Okay, LeBron, flop. <laughs> ...player sent off. Brazil went on to win the match 2-1, to one, and then win the entire tournament. The entire stadium booed the decision, oh and Rivaldo God. even got fined 5,000 pounds after the match, but he didn't care because he had a World Cup winner's medal around his neck. But as we enter the 2000s, the cheating wasn't just happening on the pitch, because Ryan Giggs was doing his cheating off the pitch mm. with his brother's wife. Wow. This all started in 2003, and at the time, Ryan Giggs was one of the best players in the world playing for Man United. Mm. He had it all, money, success, a loving family, right. but that wasn't enough for Ryan. Oh for a total of eight years, Ryan had been having an affair with his brother. Oh, Always got God. your back, yeah, yeah. no matter what. Before we were enemies. Brother's wife. This affair even went on while she was pregnant with his brother's son. After Yo, you mean to tell me? <laughs> That's crazy. Why would you do that, bro? Yo. Yeah, I guess he like it's my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nasty, bro. Bro, I'm sad though, yo. A female, like, yo, your brother's wife, bro. Yeah. And then you gonna hit her while she pregnant? Yo, that's crazy, that's crazy yo. Crazy, crazy. After eight years of lies and deception, the truth finally came out. And when Ryan's brother Rodri found out, he had this to say It was bizarre. It was a whole kind of emotions numbness uh shock disbelief how you ain't didn't know she was cheating eight he years. denied it initially didn't yes. he? yes and how did yes. you how did you uh, uh, manage to prove that you knew i i said to him i had texts and pictures and that's when he admitted it damn but what's crazy is he wasn't the only man united legend to cheat in 2003 because david beckham also made headlines oh, when he did the exact same thing well Maybe not the exact same thing. There were no brothers involved. But in 2003, Beckham was married to his wife, Victoria, when a woman named Rebecca came out to the press telling his story of the affair she had with the superstar. Beckham was playing for Real Madrid at this time and was probably the most famous football player in the world. So this story really took the world by storm. Victoria describes this period as the hardest point in their marriage, but somehow they managed to work it out and are oh. still together today. Okay, now enough cheating on wives because in 2006, there was the most insane cheating scandal football has ever seen, which saw Juventus stripped of two Serie A titles and relegated, whilst other Italian clubs faced serious points deductions. Mm. This scandal is known as Calcio Poli. So what happened? Juventus, AC Milan, Fiorentina, Lazio, and a couple smaller Italian clubs were all involved in what has been described as a match-fixing scandal wow. where referees were picked specifically to favor certain teams. This was done through anonymous phone calls using foreign phone numbers to make them difficult to trace. But in the end, this all blew up and Italian football was shocked. Each club faced a different punishment, which depended on the level of involvement they had in the scandal. Yo. Juventus got demoted to Serie B and were stripped of two league titles. Wow. Milan were deducted 30 points for the previous season and eight points for the upcoming season. Lazio were deducted only three points, but were not allowed to play in the UEFA Cup the following season, wow. and Fiorentina were deducted 15 points and were removed from the Champions League. Now, Juventus definitely got it the worst out of the clubs because the demotion to Serie B meant that a lot of their top players left the club, like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Patrick Vieira, and Fabio Cannavaro. But luckily for them, 
they still had enough quality players to get re-promoted the following season. Right. But now moving to 2010, Luis Suarez's cheating oh, got man. a whole country to hate him. Ooh. It was the World Cup quarterfinal and Uruguay came up against Ghana and both teams were desperate to make it to the next round. After 90 minutes, the game was level and went to extra time. Ghana were all over Uruguay and as the ball fell to them in the penalty box, they looked like they scored and sent off but he gave Uruguay a lifeline. The Ghana player went to take the penalty and missed it, Ooh. meaning the game finished level and went on to a penalty shootout. Uruguay ended up winning the penalty shootout, meaning Suarez's goal line catch was the reason Uruguay went hey, through yo. and the reason Ghana got sent home from the... What in that? You can't do that in football, right? None, nothing with your forearm, nothing with your arm, period. I think he still was out. like close. Uruguay though. ended up winning the penalty shootout, meaning Suarez's goal line catch was the. Hey, I think he. Oh yeah. 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 Hey, well, why, bro, and this is, this is on television. Why, how why the, the referees? How the rock, yeah, yeah, they how, catch this. Yeah. I don't Are know. you serious? They don't got no playback button. They don't got no challenge. Hey, bro, I'd have been. Hey, hey, his hand, his hand. <laughs> I've been hot. Yeah. Boy reason Uruguay went through and the reason Ghana got sent home from the World Cup. After this incident, Suarez became known as Diablo in Ghana, which means devil. But Suarez refused to apologize. He said, I did the handball, but the Ghana player missed the penalty, not me. Mm. To be honest, I agree with him. He cheated, but he got the punishment for it. Now, it's one thing having a player catch the ball off the line, but it's a whole new level of cheating when the club's masseuse does it because that's what happened in Brazil in 2013. <laughs> Just look at this. What the hell? After That's that the double masseuse. save, he knew he was in for a beating from the players, so he just made a run for it. This double save actually kept his team draw, which is enough to send them through to the next round of the cup. But now the year. Hey, oh, he got out of so there. Musty. Here is 2004 Yo, that's fine. from the players, Look so he just made a run <laughs> for sorry. it. This double I'm sorry. actually kept his team draw, which is enough to <laughs> send them through to the next round of the cup. But now the year is 2014, <laughs> and with the rise of technology, cheating is getting more creative because before a World Cup match, France noticed drones flying above their training ground. Turns out that Honduras were sending spy drones to try to pick up tactics from their training, but the spying proved to be pointless as France easily put them Still to the sword in a 3-0 victory. A couple years later in 2017, Honduras then claimed to be the victims to this drone Ooh. spy method, with the alleged culprits being the Australian national team, but I'm not too sure if I believe them. Okay, now roll on 2022 and lasers are the new form of cheating in football, <laughs> and this time Egypt fell victim in the cruelest way possible. You see, FIFA were only letting one more African country into the World Cup, and it came down to two nations, Senegal and Egypt. Okay. After two games were played, the two teams were completely tied up, meaning the World Cup dreams of an entire country would go down to a penalty shootout. Right. When Mo Salah stepped up for the penalty, Everyone thought he was going to score. He always scores for Liverpool, mm. but the Senegal fans had a plan to make sure he misses. They got out lasers and blinded Salah when he was taking the penalty, making sure he doesn't hit the target. Well, Sadio Mane then stepped up for Senegal, and without lasers to the eye, he scored, sending Senegal to the World Cup and the Egyptians home, feeling devastated with the clear mm. cheating that went on. But now it's 2024, and this World Cup winner has been banned from football for four years right, because man. he was caught Paul doping. Pogba. Paul Pogba has had one of the greatest downfalls in football and now will probably never play professional football again. This started back in August when Pogba was an unused substitute in a Serie A match for Juventus and was called in for a random doping test. One month later, Paul's test results came back positive which meant he was caught cheating, taking illegal substances. After a counter-analysis on the original test, the results still came back as positive. Paul was then slapped with a four-year ban from professional football, meaning he won't be allowed to set foot onto a football pitch until August 2027, when Pogba will be 35 years old and well past his best. Paul claims he did not deliberately take any performance-enhancing substances, but yet he still tested positive meaning he had an unfair advantage and was cheating, even if it was unknowingly. It's a shame that Pogba's career had to end this way. I was hoping he'd get back to his best at Juventus, but 
I guess it was all downhill from when he signed for Man United. Mm. But anyway, if you enjoyed the history of cheating in football, <laughs> I'm sure you'll like the video on screen now. So click it. Wow, bro. Wow. It, it makes sense to me. It, it all makes sense to me, bro. Because when it comes down to it, it comes down to money, right? Yeah. It all comes down to money, right? Yeah. And a lot of people do what with sports? Well, it comes down with passion, too, bro. These dudes no, no, just want to win. One question. What do a lot of people do when it comes to sports? Bet. Okay. So if the odds of this team is way up here of them not winning, if we could get to a few players, listen, everybody can make a lot of money. That We used to say back in the day, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to basketball and football, it's all Vegas. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all betting and this and that and that and this. And some people would rather have a lot of money in their pocket mm -hmm. than the World Cup. You feel what I'm saying? Or a trophy or this or that. You so know? how do you feel about all the four teams fixing each other's scores? I think they was all in cahoots with each other. They, Everybody they was, was but... breaking bread. You know what I'm saying? Wow, yo. Everybody breaking bread, baby. And wow. we all eating. <laughs> y'all let us know what y'all think about cheating, bro. What do y'all think about this? Um, And what's some cheating stories that y'all knew of? Because we know it's a lot of little clubs out there, or there's a lot of clubs with football leagues out there that do even more cheating, bro. Mm. So y'all let us know in the comment section the cheating stories that y'all heard. Y'all let us know what y'all think about this video. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. This was very interesting, interesting to us. I'm Nick Dawson. And we out, baby. One.